Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Coach Johnson, and in today's video, what we're going to talk about is Ryan Krauser. Ryan Krauser hit a massive world-leading throw a few weeks back, and we wanted to break it down. How does he throw? What makes him so good? Check it out in this video. Everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airte Throws Nation, and in today's video, what we're going to talk about is a little breakdown of what makes Ryan Krauser so good and so consistent. Again, a few weeks back, you know, Ryan Krauser had another great performance, 22.73, followed up by a 22.74 throw. And one of the things we wanted to do is kind of just put it out there and, and look at some of the things that he does from our perspective and um, talk about why he's so consistent. So one of the things that I'm a huge fan on is you notice how he sets up one of the things again we talk about in the throwing chain reaction how critical it is to set up to start the rhythms and the paths and the patterns are really really fundamentally critical to how you start your throw so one of the things you're going to see is as ryan sets up you see kind of this setup where he kind of tees up over his left leg and you're going to notice that he gets this really nice kind of alignment and then as we see it he's able to come back to the center, you're going to notice the position of how he sets up the right leg. And what that does is you notice when he winds up, you really can't see too much of his arm, right? So he's not twisting. And one of the mistakes we'll see with a lot of young throwers is they see this and they see the big shift and then they do these big movements like he's doing. But if you'll notice his hips, you're going to notice the direction of his hips. They're kind of facing that way, right? And that's what's going to be really important. He's not creating his, a lot of twisting with his hips. He's creating a lot of separation. It's creating good tension. So now when he starts to come back, this is what we refer to as this is pillar two. You're going to notice one of our cues, and we did a video that talks about the difference between shot and disc. Shoulders kind of over the knees, right? So we're bent, but we're not crazy bent but we can't be upright like the discus because the implement is sitting here and the implement needs to be moving around this leg so if it's too tall or the or, or a thrower is too upright they're going to cut inside and then that's going to cause the hips to f kind of fall back this way so again this is what makes krauser such an amazing thrower and, and technician is you're going to notice too where the weight the weight's forward on the feet the shoulders are forward and he's going to be coming around and he gets around that axis and then you're going to see what we refer to as pillar three he really drops and drives this knee in as that knee goes down that's going to pull everything in and that's going to really create that nice big wide sweep you notice he gets a wider sweep than some other throwers some other throwers like to take a lower sweep but krauser really sees himself pull and he really pulls what we say pillar three is pulling and it's it's applying speed so he really pulls into the throw and you're going to notice by the time he's facing the throw that his left arm is basically out towards about three o'clock and you see that what we always talk about is the counterbalance system between the balance arm and the sweep leg what you're going to see is as the, the height of the leg is here and you're going to notice it's coming down and around and it, be, it allows him to be very rotational and the one key thing that's different than between the shot and the discus is how we rewrap. So we call this pillar four, twisting and wrapping, and you're gonna see that he's gonna be really wrapped up, lower body's really moving ahead, and we and again, we wanna focus on the left side is what's creating the rewrap, not so much of trying to hold the shot back. So one of the things that you'll notice here, he stays in that really good position, and then as he's coming into what we call pillar five, which is getting down into the power position, this heel is going to elevate. That creates this really great load, right? You're going to see the knee pushing. So you're going to see as the heel elevates, you're going to watch this angle in it's just going to get more acute. So you see that heel elevates to keep the, the angle here, and so he can drive that hip really into the throw. Now you're going to notice what's really key, and one of the things we talk about when we teach the finish is in the throwing chain reaction, again, the fact that the thrower is so on balance, it's going to really allow the proper action if you're not falling. Now it, what's ironic is in this throw, he actually was a little off balance compared to his 2273 throw. That one he had a little bit cleaner. Now looking at this throw, this is still obviously an amazing throw and a PR and it just goes to show you that this guy's at some point he's going to be really pushing that world record and I got to believe that's the goal. Now one of the things though is you look at the finish, one of the things I think Krauser does 
perhaps better than anybody in the world is looking at the how the elevation the right hip is really pushing down this left sector line now look at his shoulders are facing in so he's creating that sling effect that you kind of see again with the even you know with the discus but the key is is in the shot we talk about the hip has to get in front so that you can push behind the ball and that's really critical and so you'll notice that that the hips are ahead of the upper body and again we'll go back a frame so when he when he comes back and he comes out of that wrap and this is what we call five look at the arm go wide and that's very much like if we looked at a glider at this point you would see kind of a very similar position but the angle would be a little bit more higher on a glider but here he he's really pulling and activating and he's gonna have that great lift and you're gonna notice how the shoulders really square up and he's got this kind of motion through that hip is ahead and you notice the blocks on the ground he's driving here and watch how low to the ground the drive leg is going to stay there's not a lot of jump and i know there's a lot of people that advocate jump and that does work and again i think highly intuitive athletes will figure that out and we talk about lift so it's a semantic thing we, we're in 100 percent agreement with people that you have to lift the shot so i think some people will jump more effectively than others and others will be um, lifting so one of the key things we talk about is as you drop we drop from three to four we're gonna come down and we and when you try to sink in this position you create that double rotation and then you create that nice lifting up into the ball so again you can see Krauser is just a, a hair off of the uh, off of what he normally finishes in that extra movement I mean that that's not a whole lot but it was more than you know his 2273 which was really really uh, clean now here's one thing we'll talk about this is a rule some people say this is a foul and here's what I'm going to say and some people out there I'm sure that'll watch this will argue on the physics but my argument is if you're moving forward how can you be moving on top and forward at the same time he does drop down but everything's moving forward which in my opinion is why he's such an amazing shot putter because he has such an amazing sprint into the throw so even if the heel drops down and touches the top of the ring and he does kind of push everything's truly moving forward so they changed this rule at the IAAF and I remember talking to uh, another elite shot putter years ago who was talking about meets in Europe and how you know Hoffa and all these guys back in the day they all told the officials that's BS and uh, so so eventually that rule this rule was changed so this I guess some people said it was a foul some people said it wasn't what I'm gonna look at is the fact of the matter is this little bit of a smidge I, I guarantee if you let every thrower in the comp and they did the same thing I don't I'm gonna bet it's not gonna change the distance of their throws too much if you look at somebody like Darrell Hill you know he, his heel doesn't really do that and he's throwing monster distances as well so I think my argument is that you always have to be moving into the direction of the throw and if you are you really can't be sitting down you're moving this way and so if it drops down as you push you know I see it from a standpoint of you're not really sitting down you're moving in and if there's a little bit of a touch and I think that's why the IAAF changed that rule but at any rate this is what what really makes Krauser so so efficient is the fact that again he really moves around the axis we talked about that we broke down the Daniel Stahl video the the sweep is you know excellent he, he pulls the hips underneath them so he creates this amazing axis great rewrap that's going to allow him to continue to move out the arm goes out wider around and then you see the stopping action and you see the hip leading and he's behind that hip right or the shot is behind that hip so he can get that great big strike and again notice the delivery off the fingers so he's going to get an incredible flick we see in the right side as we we describe it and teach it that the right side is going to be pushing the whole body so when you see this little bit movement of the shoulder you're actually seeing the right side rotate the whole system and that's what we like so we're huge fans of Ryan Krauser at Arite Throws Nation uh, technically clearly one of the greatest ever he's the Olympic record holder and I will go do my Vegas wager that at some point he's going to break the world record and it's going to be pretty exciting so look forward to seeing him throw At any rate this is a, an amazing throw and he's a great technical model so hopefully you guys like this video if you did be sure to comment below we're gonna have analysis coming out comparing beginner and immediate and advanced thrower kind of looking at that again if you like this give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next video
Coffin Throwing World. It has been Daniel Stahl's massive series in Doha. He had a phenomenal series, 70-56 is his best on the day. Three throws over 70 meters and three throws 69 mid. Huge, huge performance, really awesome. So let's take a look here and we'll break down his 70-56. So one of the 